All right, today we are going to be talking about embedded triangles. Embedded triangles are just triangles that can be split apart into different, um, into smaller, similar triangles. So here I have what looks like a triangle with a line, this big purple-ish triangle. And um, then we split it up into the big triangle in the green and the little triangle in the orange. So here we have this big triangle here that represents this piece here. And then we have our orangey one in here, the small one, and that's this one here. Um, notice that we didn't do anything with this kind of like extra piece right here, this part, okay, it's more of like a trapezoid, okay, um, and that's not a triangle. So we only want to make sure that the pictures that we draw are triangles, and we kind of had an example of that in our homework yesterday, if you remember. All right, so first example, we are on page 43. And so page 43 in your packets. And we are first going to start with um, pulling out the two triangles that we're going to work with here. So I'm going to zoom in a little bit so it's a little easier for everybody to see. Okay, and here we have, we're going to start with this little triangle here. Okay, so I'm going to redraw that. So I have two... 0.4 and 1.8, and I believe that's three. Okay, and then I'm going to use the big triangle. So this one here. Okay, so I'm going to redraw that. Okay, so notice that I also changed that it was the same direction as the purple triangle. So I'm going to have X here three on the bottom, and then the big side five here. Now, this should look very similar to the problems we've been doing in class, okay? You should be able to set up a proportion using one of the sides that we know, which is 1.8 and three, 1.8 and three, and then the side that we don't know, 2.4, and X. So 2.4 on top and X on the bottom. After we cross multiply and divide, we get X to be 4. Okay, then our next example, okay, down at the bottom of page 43, okay, we are first again going to start by taking out our little triangle. Okay, so I'm going to redraw that one off to the side. Okay, so I have 1.96 on the bottom, 6.72 on the side, and then 7 for the long side. And then we have this big triangle here. Okay, again, I'm going to kind of flip it so that it matches with the corresponding angles of my other one. Okay, so we have 7 on the bottom for that one and Y on the side and 25 for the long one. Okay, you should be able to um, make a proportion now based off the information that we do know. Okay, we do know this side and this side correspond, so 1.96 and 7. And then going off of the pair that we want to find out, okay, 6.72 and y. Now, I could have also used this third side if I wanted to instead of that original starting one because I do know both 7 and 25. So I could have used that instead of 1.96 and 7. And after I cross multiply, I get Y to be 24. So the main thing that you need to remember when doing these problems is separating out the triangles. Okay, once you have the triangles separated, it makes it a lot easier. It's really hard when they're overlapping or embedded within each other. Okay, so on the next page, okay, we are have a different type of embedded triangle here, but we're still going to take the two triangles apart. 
so we have this piece. So I'm going to draw it here, four and six. And then we have our bigger triangle, Z and 10. Okay, and I'm going to draw that off to the side. Okay, so I have Z here and 10 here. Okay, so splitting them apart makes it a lot easier to solve. So we're first, again, starting with 6 and 10 because we know both of those. So 6 over 10. And then we don't know or want to know 4 and Z, that pair. So 4 and Z. All right, so after we cross multiply 10 times 4 divided by 6, Okay, that's not really a great number, but Z ends up being 6.67 approximately. Okay, and same thing for this next one, number two. Okay, we're going to split the two triangles apart. Okay, I'll start with the big one this time, I guess. That's the one I started tracing, doesn't really matter. Okay, so I know that this side is 11. Okay, I don't necessarily know this side because there's an X there. Okay, so I still need to find that length. And then my little triangle I know is 7 and 15. So 7 and 15. So I do actually want to find this long side. I'll just call it question mark here. Okay, because that's going to help us find that X value that was in the problem to start with. Okay, so we want to try and find this X, okay, but we need to know this full length in order to do that. So when I set up this proportion, okay, I do 11 and 7 because I know those corresponding sides. And then I know question mark and 15. Okay, so when I cross multiply, I end up with um, not a good answer, but that's okay. This full length here ends up being about 23.6. So what I found was this full length. So in order to find X, I'm going to take 23.6 and subtract 15 from it. Okay, so X ends up being about 8 point six for that one. That one was definitely a little more challenging because you had to take that extra step of understanding that you need to find that full length in order to find X. So definitely a challenge, a challenging question.